Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. I'm a licensed tile contractor in Northern California. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. So today I'm super excited to be bringing you a video from Andrew. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. It's called Totally Rad Tile. I'm going to put a link up here so you can get to his channel and this original video. The reason I'm excited about this video and want to share it with you is because it's the first time that I've actually seen RedGuard used correctly. That's right, this is the first video that I have seen RedGuard used correctly. RedGuard, I'm sure you know what RedGuard is. It's one of the most popular waterproofing products out there. It's probably the most widely used waterproofing product in America, maybe besides a pan liner or a PVC liner. But um, as far as a roll-on waterproofing, you can find RedGuard at Home Depot. You can find it just about anywhere. It's marketed more towards do-it-yourselfers and handyman type. So. Um, but it is, it's, it's still sold at, at tile wholesalers. You can find it at Dow Tile, Arizona Tile, Emser Tile. So it is sold to professionals as well. That being said, most people use it incorrectly. So this video, I want to show it to you. Um, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss this video. Guys, um, so hey, I want to build a cutaway of a shower pan. Basically, I want to, I want to show how I was taught how to build a shower. So it's going to be uh, pre-slope waterproofing. It's going to show the drain assembly, everything. Um, now it's going to be a two float shower pan with a three piece drain, a uh, clamping ring. We're going to replace the traditional PVC liner with a cold liquid membrane. Um, this is the way that I was taught to do it. This is the way I did all my showers for the first six, seven years. Then started messing around with doing uh, Schluter, Schluter drains, single float systems, divots, stuff like that. Obviously a single float is a lot easier than doing the uh, the two floats with the liner and everything. So um, this should give you a, a pretty good understanding if you haven't built a lot of showers or you're thinking about building one. Um, it'll give you an understanding of just how to control the water, water migration and everything and, and the basic components of a drain and shower and just kind of how um, I would teach people how to prep. Obviously. There's little tweaks you can make here and there, um, different systems you can use. I'm not saying this is the best way or the only way, or this is just the way that I was taught. And then it helps me kind of understand all the other systems as well. So um, let's get to it. So I got my shower drain base marked. I started making the cut here. So I got this set up to where It'll be full here, full here. I'm gonna end up cutting this off so you guys will be able to see the entire side, the mock-up. You'll see the uh, pre-slope, waterproofing. You'll see exactly how I build it. Camping ring actually has these plastic hubs that it goes into, and most drains will have this. The, the issue that I see the most is like GCs and plumbers and stuff will cut out past this to get the drain base to sit flat on the subfloor. And you don't want that because your tolerance of your deck mud can't go down to that eighth inch, quarter inch like that. So what you do is you get a three, three and a half inch hole bit. And all you're gonna do is cut out the material for this to slide down through. And then when it slides down through, it's gonna rest on those nubs. And that gives you your half inch to pack your deck mud up under it. Yeah, so pre-slope, um, if you're using deck mud, a half inch is probably okay. If you were doing it as a full float, then uh, you probably want more than that. You probably want at least three quarters, but for a pre-slope, half inch is probably okay. All right, so we're ready to start prepping this thing out. So what's gonna be a little bit different than probably what you're taught or what you're used to is, um, I'm gonna plumb and square the walls up and then drop my board all the way to the subfloor. I know some guys are gonna be like, oh, well, it's gonna wick water, yada, yada, yada. We're using a cold liquid membrane. So over our pre-slope and then to our wall, it's gonna run straight up. It's gonna be one entity, one rubber liner over our pre-slope all the way up, as opposed to a PVC liner going behind or a hot mop going behind the wall and then having to do some funky kick out crap at the bottom. This is a much cleaner way to prep it. All right, so we got our Hardy Becker cut here. Um, I'm just gonna screw this in. I'm not gonna go over too much of how we square our walls and plumb our walls and everything. For the most part, we just use drywall shims, which you can find at any box store in the drywall section. They're just cardboard shims. And we staple those on, um, just use levels and stuff. But there's nothing really to it, but I'll explain how we figure out what side to shim out more and everything to get a nice square shower. Okay, so I got all the board hung now. So the next thing I do is I go through, make sure all my screws are sunk 
and I scrape off the flat trowel all the party backer boogers. And then I'm gonna go through, seam tape all my corners, everywhere where the boards meet. And then I like to thin set this on, thin set all my seams, thin set all my screw holes. Uh, if you're doing a smaller format tile, after you got your thin set on there, go through with a wet sponge and kind of smooth them up. You'll get really, really smooth seams, smooth walls. Everything's gonna be covered with the thin set and be ready for that waterproofing to come up over the top of that. So obviously, instead of doing the seam tape, you could put a felt in the corners. So we'll probably end up doing that after we do the pre-slope, just to show you a different way to do it. Um, I just prefer the seam tape. It's what I've always used. It's what I'm used to. There's nothing wrong with the felt. It's probably actually a little bit better to use. Um, but after we do the pre-slope, we'll waterproof, put the felt, tuck that in nice, and then waterproof over that and up the wall. And that's gonna keep our seam from cracking all the way around, all the way up the wall. Okay, so we're gonna do our pre-slope now. You can see we're right at a half inch. We're just gonna call that two feet just for simple math purposes. So go back here, mark an inch. That's gonna give us our pitch. So he's just using some wet deck mud as a pre-slope. Pre yeah. Basically built it the same way I would do, whether it's a concrete substrate, wood substrate, it's not gonna to matter to me. I'm gonna clean the surface real good, put a primer down, um, add a slurry coat of thin set, and that's what I'm gonna pack my mud to. That's what's gonna adhere my, my pre-slope to the substrate, is that slurry coat. Okay, so we are just about ready for waterproof. Um, gonna use the handyman special, so I can get made fun of. I've got the red guard, some uh, fabric, although it's not required to use fabric in the corners and change the plane. It is recommended though. And I believe Hydrovan does the same thing and a, and a few others. Um, they recommend using fabric in all changes of plane. They just don't require it. I believe um, that stuff's required. Okay, so just want to touch on this real quick. I'm not sure if I've gone over it, but obviously we set our drain base at a half inch. Um, our minimum tolerance for deck mud is a half inch if you're using an acrylic polymer admix, um, which I'm doing because that's gonna strengthen my deck mud, as opposed to putting um, chicken wire in there or lath to reinforce it like with a, with a rebar buried in it, or to act as a rebar. Um, I just go for the acrylic admix to strengthen this because deck mud on its own doesn't have very much tensile strength. It wants to crack, crumble with movement. So you want this as solid as can be, uh, especially since your whole shower is being built from the ground up, from the base up. So it starts here. You want this to be rock solid, then your waterproofing, you want that to be bulletproof, and then your final float. All right. So I highly recommend using this fabric if you're gonna use Red Guard in the changes of plane at the floor and wall connection. That's one of the mistakes, that's one of the mistakes I see people making. Uh, there's another YouTuber that uses Red Guard a lot. He doesn't use it step here and that would be the uh, the prime coat it'd be four parts cool water one part red guard um what you're going to do is you're going to wipe down your walls already back your tents have that little chalky film on it and it soaks up moisture really quick uh you're going to want to wipe that down clean up your your pre-slope and then you're going to apply that prime coat over your walls and your pre-slope and then that's when you're going to put your uh red guard over that that's what's going to adhere the red guard to the prime coat, the prime coat's adhered to the pre-slope. So I've never heard of doing uh, the primer coat before. So when that, applying red guard, the biggest me. mistake I see people make is they apply too much. Yes. They think, yes. oh, the more, the more I put on there, the more waterproof it's gonna Great be. Great point. When really they're just doing a disservice to themselves. Great point. Um, what's gonna end up happening, you're gonna go and put like a bunch in the corners, like, ooh, I don't want that to crack. And that's what it's gonna do, it's gonna crack. It's gonna crack. Because basically you're gonna have these nice thin coats, even coats, that's what you want. You're gonna have a thin coat here, a thin coat here, a bunch of material in here. This is gonna dry quicker, this is gonna dry quicker. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull this material away. It's gonna cause that to crack. You wanna do nice even coats, you don't need to put a bunch in the corners, that's not what this product is designed for. Uh, any, any product like this really. The liquid membranes, you just want to put nice, even coats. All right, so now we'll put our fabric in. 
So in my opinion, if you're not using this fabric at your changes of plane, uh, you're doomed. This shower is going to fail. This reinforcement, even though they might not say it's, it's required, you're going to have issues. A lot of the, the installation literature in, from these companies, I'm not going to say that it's set up for you to fail or like a loophole for them to get out of, but there's definitely, um, definitely something to it. There's definitely... We are ready to start waterproofing the drain base. So basically this clamping ring goes on over your waterproofing. If it was a PVC liner, it would run past. This is what's going to clamp it down into place, right? So with the liquid membrane, I'm going to put the bolts back in, tape them up, paint out to this edge. Um, it says that it bonds to PVC, um, especially if you did that prime coat. It's going to bond to this. Uh, some guys get kind of sketched out, like when this is clamped down, you're, just, you're going to have issues in the future of maybe it peeling back. Um, I'm not sure how you'd have that issue, especially with the groove and, and the way that it clamps on there. But something you could do to bolster it up, uh, you can use the same fabric here, put it over the top, overlap it, put it over the top. You're going to paint around everything. You have your holes cut out for your bolts. I'll show you how to do that. We'll just do that for shits and giggles. Uh, you can also use a fiberglass like mat. You can do some things here if you feel uncomfortable with just having the liquid membrane run to the edge, you know, with that thickness of about a credit card um, of waterproofing. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then there are some other things you can do uh, with the drain base to uh, get a little more meat underneath this clamping ring. So basically here's what you do. Um, have a couple pieces. You run it past where it overlap. Hit those two screw holes like that. This piece is gonna come over the top of that one. It's gonna screw hole here, 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 here. Just notch those out, put your bolts in. You're gonna waterproof all of that and then out and around. That's gonna give you a little better seal around the flange. And it's gonna give you a little more meat for your ring to clamp onto after the fact. So go ahead and waterproof it all crazy. Um, then you'll come back, you'll cut that out when it's all dry. We'll show that. So let's just, uh, we're gonna use one. We're not gonna overlap it. Obviously we got this dinky doinker freaking set up here. So let's do that. So he had mentioned the thickness of a credit card. So I believe you want to achieve 22 mils, not millimeters. Again, there's a difference between mils and millimeters. So just take your ring here. And now, uh, this one there, there, and right here. So for, so for liquid applied membranes, uh, they use mills, which is a, thou a thousandth of an inch. It's not a millimeter, it's a unit of an inch. It's much different. Every time I do that, people get confused. They think I'm talking about millimeters. Uh, I think Red Guard wants 22 mils, and they're very precise, they're very specific, no more, no less. Five minutes, um, it's getting there. I'll probably come down in another hour, and I'm going to put the last two coats on this. So typically I'll do three coats on the pan, and I'm going to run that up about 18 inches up the wall, and then the rest of the way will just be two coats. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned our bolts off here. Just pulled the tape off. Um, cut the fabric away. So now you see kind of what we got going on here. It just gives you a little better seal, a little. So yeah, I love how this, how he did this detail. This is the only way I would ever entertain using Red Guard. I'll go over the clamping ring here real quick. So you see this little channel here, this groove that runs to a weep hole. So what happens is when this is sitting on here, you're gonna have your tile, your grout, your final float of your deck mud. Any water that gets through that tile and grout is gonna seep through that deck mud to this pan liner. It's gonna run down and it makes its way through these weep holes. And then in between this body, this channel here, that's for the water to seep down into the drain and out of your shower. Uh, anytime these weep holes get clogged, you're gonna have a pan tile that constantly looks wet, like it's saturated. It's not draining properly. So you wanna make sure that these stay clear. Uh, most clamping rings are gonna have them on the side as well. 
So when you see them here, there'll also be a little channel. See that channel there? That's a weep hole as well. That's a weep hole as well. And then obviously on the top. So when you're putting your drain rock in here, and I'll show you, you don't just pile them up around here and pack all this with deck mud because you're gonna clog them from the side. Over time, those will get packed as well. There needs to be drain rock here and on top as well. All right, so we're ready for our final float. Um, what I'm shooting for with my final float is about an inch thick of deck mud. And since we already have our pitch and everything, it should just be one inch all the way across. Um, you should already be pretty much there with your pitch and level and everything. So uh, this is already cut away. So I can just slide this down in there. Now with that, you're gonna deduct obviously so normally that drain screws in. So I don't, I don't know what I'm at there, but yeah. If I have a quarter inch thick tile, I'm pretty much at one inch plus my tile. So we'll just run with that for this video. And we are ready to go ahead and protect the clamping ring with some drain rock. I'll mix up some deck mud and we'll go ahead and pack this out and finish it up. This is the, the coolest little mock Okay, so I just threw some deck mud on there. Super wet and sloppy looking. That's really wet it's deck mud. Wet and sloppy. <laughs> um, this isn't the way I normally make my uh, Shooting dry videos pack. is hard, Obviously, man. It's not very dry. But for the video, that is what you are getting. As you can see, we're about one inch thick all the way through. Um, you could reinforce this with a chicken wire lath, something to strengthen this. Um, I personally don't think it needs anything. It's case by case type deal. There's times that I do it, there's times that I don't. So we're not gonna say every time do it, every time don't, whatever. If you do it every single time, great. That's your decision. Um, I just personally wouldn't do it every time, especially if I'm the one that from the ground up built the thing and I know uh, that we have very little or no deflection at all on the substrate and our pre-slope and everything's rock solid, I'm not too concerned about this doing anything. And if it does crack a little bit, this is an uncoupling membrane, uh, deck mud itself is. So if you get minor stuff, it shouldn't transfer through to the tile and the grout. Um, so the weep holes, we are all protected here, just a thin layer over the top. And then I come out around the clamping ring a little bit. You can see the way that this is gonna pack in, in between the drain and the rock, pack that all in. And all you need is just a thin layer. You don't need to build this up all crazy. Your drain doesn't need to be sitting three inches up in the air. Um, just a thin layer to protect the weep holes. And then this deck mud's gonna come across. I'm gonna use a tile to gauge. So basically a scrap piece of tile, that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack around here before I pack anywhere else. Cause I'm gonna get this height set right before I go back. So I'm gonna use a scrap piece of tile. I'm gonna pack all my deck mud all around the drain, pack it tight and then use a scrap piece going around and the piece should be flush with the top of the drain and the deck mud because then once we add a little bit of material, we're gonna pop up just above it uh, with the thin set. So basically this is where I'm gonna start my final float, pack all the way around the drain, make sure that my scrap piece of tile goes all the way flush and then I'm gonna go ahead and pack all the way out. So that's that. Um, yeah. I made a video, cool. <laughs> Again, it, it's really hard to make, if you haven't done it, to, to make a video while you're working and trying to make everything come off right. I know if he had another shot at making that deck mud that it, it would have been nice and fluffy because uh, he's a California guy, he knows how to float, but sometimes you're, you're scrambling, you're making the video and you just use what you got. So. Hope you like the video. Again, this is the very first video that I've seen that shows correctly how to build one of these weep type traditional shower pans using Red Guard. I see it done wrong all the time. Even Customs Red Guard video on YouTube uh, is very difficult to follow along. It doesn't show all these steps that Andrew showed. So this is a great video if you're thinking of using Red Guard. If you have any other questions, leave your comment in the section below. You can find me on Instagram at TileCoach, and you can find Andrew on Instagram at eTile. So, so stay strong, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. I hope it's somewhat of a little relief from all the craziness that's happening in the world right now. And I want to just tell you, if you're struggling with, with mental health issues, if you're feeling depressed, unmotivated, if you're having drug and alcohol addiction problems, if you're watching too much porn, if you're 
just feeling crappy, man. I just want to encourage you that we're going to get through this. I hope my videos kind of inspire you to kind of get into maybe building something for yourself, maybe finding another line of work if, if you're unemployed. The tile trade is a beautiful, wonderful trade that gives you so much purpose. It's, it's like combining art and creativity with hard work and it's just a really beautiful thing. Um, so that's what I want to leave you with guys. I hope you liked this video and if you did make sure to watch the next video coming up because you'll like that one as well. Click like and subscribe. Make sure to turn on your notifications so that you see my weekly video uploads. Watch that next video coming up and last but not least guys I love you. I love being your tile coach and we'll see you on the next video.